burning sand. I've seen the great Rocky Mountain that reaches where the mighty eagle soars. You know, big or small, I've seen it all from a box car door. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Boxcar Willie Theater. And now, here is the world's favorite hobo, Boxcar Willie! Except that guy, and he blows the train with <laughs> Take that night train to Memphis. Take that night train to Memphis. Tell the engineer to pull the throttle over. Leave at 357. You'll arrive at it. I'll be waiting at a open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hello, everybody. First of all, do you mind if I sit down? Well, I didn't want to cancel the show, and so I said, I can make it if I can just have a little stool to sit on. I told him with a stage hand, I said, I need a stool to sit on. He said, how high? I said, oh, about like a milking stool. I got no boy working for me, he never milked a cow and kept the size of the stool. I want to welcome you all here tonight. Thank you very much. Ain't nobody any more proud or more lucky than I am to be here tonight, and I realize that. And first of all, I want to say some very, very elated thank yous to all you wonderful people. When they announced that I had leukemia, I got over 7,000 get well cards right here at this theater alone. And the Grand Ole Opry got about the same amount. So it was a very, you know, emotional time for me and you just didn't send a card no you, you, you sent hallmarks <laughs> I know I looked <laughs> there were some expensive cards and the fact is you just didn't sign your name to a card and drop it in the mailbox practically every one of you put a note in there or a little letter of some kind sometimes one page two page one was nine pages long <laughs> I didn't care, I didn't have nothing to do. <laughs> I was laying in that cancer research center, MD Anderson in Houston. They'd give me 90 days to live. At the end of 90 days, I couldn't pay my bills, so they'd give me another 90 days. <laughs> I have found out the equation for longevity now. Them doctors ain't gonna put you in the ground if you owe money. <laughs> they know when you're down there they ain't gonna get that money so they just keep lingering I've been on a 90 day installment plan for two years <laughs> let me tell you what the hardest part of being in the hospital was as far as I was concerned it was at night when they turned out the lights disconnected the TV the telephone shut off they closed that door they got one nurse on duty and you lay there in the darkness wondering why, where, how, and when, you know. One night I couldn't go to sleep for the longest, so I rang that little button, you know, here she comes. She said, yes, can I help you? I said, nurse, I can't get to sleep tonight. Can I get a sleeping pill? Oh, yes, your doctor prescribed one in case you need it. She said, I'll be right back. <laughs> now, I don't know how long right back was. <laughs> But in the meanwhile, I went to sleep. <laughs> you guessed it. Wake up, I got your sleeping pill. <laughs> then I couldn't go back to sleep. <laughs> so it was during those periods of time that I would have a long talk with the man upstairs. And I said, Lord, I'm not asking you to cure me. I said, I'm begging you. I said, but when I do get back on stage, if you'll let me, I said, I want to be funny. I want to make people laugh. I said, when my throat is right, I know I'm a pretty good country singer, but I want to, I want to go out of this world making people laugh. Because I go down to the little children's ward, little babies and children, you know, with this terrible disease, and they all smiling and laughing and happy. And I'd look at them and think, I ain't got no problems. I said, so let me get back on stage because a good old Betty laugh is the best cure there is. So tonight, if I tell some silly story or some corny joke and you don't laugh, 